Hey guys, so this is actually really cool. We're doing something really unique. We're doing, uh, it's it's remote tuning. I got Eric's on the phone here with me. Say what's up, Eric. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> what's up, brother? All right, so he's uh, he's already here. He's, he's controlling my computer here. And uh, basically I need this map set up so I can put the car down the road to get the alignment done. Um, what it was doing is it was running really rich because this is an untuned map essentially. This uh, area you see here that's like a, a basically a canyon <laughs> that's formed in this fuel map. Um, me and Orlando did that trying to get it to idle at a better AFR and uh, Eric's gonna fix up the rest of it so we can put it down the block to go to uh, Bayside. So I thought you guys would want to see this. This is pretty cool stuff man. Basically, <laughs> I guess this, this is the 1.7 that uh, you and Orlando were working with, and you got it to 12. Yeah. Okay. Uh, put in 1.44. 1.44? Yep. Okay. So. Now, when it idles, it should idle closer to uh, to your target of uh, 14.7. Let's go and like lean out a little bit in the boost area. See, can you see the the, the cursor how, how I'm moving it? Yeah. Does that come through? Okay. So, see where it's sitting right now? Yep. Okay, that's basically that's that's atmospheric. So basically, what what happens is you start to hit a transition area where you go to atmosphere and then as you progress down the, R the RPM range, you'll start actually going and creeping up into boost. We're just gonna change all that to, um, let's be safe. Let's just, let's just call it 1.8 milliseconds. Cause you said okay. when you were at, when, that 1.7 milliseconds before was giving you about what, like 12 AFR? Yeah. Yeah, 12, yeah, so, 12 and a half. Yeah. Yeah, so let's just uh, call this, you know, uh, 1.8. 1.8? Okay. Yeah, just to be on the safe side. And again, this is, this, this is very, these are very, very, very rough calculations. This is, I believe, so what they refer to as block tuning. <laughs> yes. The crazy thing is, is there's some people out there that really tune like this, right? Like, this is some... I've seen it. <laughs> some shit, man. I've seen it. <laughs> now, so, yeah. So, guys, this is, like I said, this is just basic stuff to get me down the road to get it aligned. This is by no means a, a professional tune. Now, Eric knows what he's doing, and this is going to be safe, but I don't want you guys to think that this is, like, the, the flat-out boost tune or whatever. This is not that at all. You guys will see that. Uh, <laughs> again, do not look at any of these numbers and just try to plug them into your car. You know, <laughs> there will be problems. There will be some serious problems. <laughs> right now, we're just going based off of uh, what you know, what him and Orlando just seen today. This uh, this graph right here is just basically a three D representation of how the cams are going to be advanced see how it peaks out at 30 degrees advance yeah right now we don't know if that's if that's kosher or not what uh, but what i do know is even with some pretty aggressive uh cams and, and piston setups um about 15 15 degrees is is about is all right you're okay. not going to kill anything so what we're gonna do is basically we're gonna knock we're gonna knock off that the 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 peak of that. Oh, okay. So see how it went flat. Wow, yeah. yeah so Nice. Should be good. And uh, we'll do the same right here as well. We'll knock off that peak. Alright. So even if you do get froggy and go into it, you shouldn't crash your valves. <laughs>
So before we go and we get it aligned to save a little bit of money, yeah, I gotta lower the back end the rest of the way. Now I already did one wheel. Let me tell you, it's kind of difficult. Now these BC coils, they make it about as easy as it possibly can get, but it's still not an easy task to do. So this is a side that I already did. Uh, the front's a little bit lower than the rear, but not by much. Uh, the rear, I dropped it, I don't know, compared to what it was, about an inch and three quarter. See, that looks nice, right? Still has a lot of gap, uh, but I want to leave a little bit of room because I want to set the damper on this real soft. That way, when she takes off, she'll dig in the back and plant real good. So here's the side that I haven't done yet. Look at that gap. Ugh, that's horrible. Oh my gosh, we gotta drop this car like a bad habit. There we go. Oh, wait a minute. What is that? Arrgh. That is some damage that was done by those we do not speak of. Hmm. But it looks like we can still lower the coil over down and it'll be okay. Thank you, sweet baby Moses. All right, so the nice thing about the BC coilovers uh, is that they're actually pretty simple to lower. Um, you start with loosening this up here and then you essentially rotate this cylinder down into this portion here and that's where you get your drop so what I like to do is I loosen this up and then I bring this up right to about the height that I want to drop it and then you use some of these special wrenches here and you grab this and you twist it down Next, I like to throw some gear oil down there. Uh, they say to put grease, but I like gear oil. I like the way it smells. I like the way it tastes. It's good stuff. So, just a little bit to fill this cup down here. There we go. Kind of spread it around. You want this nice and lubed up for multiple reasons. Lube is good, everyone. Lube is good. If this top piece comes loose and it won't spin, what you have to do is you have to basically counter twist this piece and this piece together. That way they're real tight and then you can move the cylinder down. See what we got. Oh, yeah. Still a little short. So it looks like we need to come down another quarter of an inch. I just want to give a big shout out to BC Coils. BC Coils make some pretty legit stuff. I'm really happy to have their product on my car. And the cool thing about them was that they were able to actually make a custom top hat and perch combination for the STI swap. So when you take a 2007 STI, you switch over to a 5x114 hub. Uh, that changes things around. So you can't just use strictly GC coilovers in this thing. You have to have a custom combination. And they hooked me up. Thanks, BC. Also, Precision Shaft out of Clearwater. Uh, they made a uh, custom carbon fiber drive shaft for this setup. 
beautiful piece. I know we didn't work on it today, but I figured since I'm, you know, spreading the love, precision shaft gave me a real nice shaft. And of course, thank you to everyone like you who watches these videos. Without you guys, this would not be possible. And that is something I am forever grateful for. So I hope you enjoyed this build. Uh, the story got a little crazy in the beginning, but overall I think it made me a better person, made me wiser, stronger, and more confident in what I do. Um, I'm really happy to say that uh, this car behind me, I built it. So this is gonna be good, man. I got some crazy stuff planned for this car. You guys are gonna love it. I mean, come on, we've got the exhaust going out of the hood. Like, yeah. It's going to get crazy. So uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. If you're a subscriber, thank you for hanging out with me. And uh, I guess we'll see you guys next time when we go and take it for the alignment. <laughs> That'll actually be the first time we drive this car. See ya.